So I bought this core drill rig a few months ago to be able to core drill at my house, which I haven't done yet. But my parents need to core drill right here for their septic. And when I bought this, I had to balance out the investment of buying it to see whether it was worth it or not. And this was part of the equation, was to do the core drill here. Not, normally you could go to Home Depot and rent up to a five inch core drill for not that much money. I think it's like $100 for the day or something. But the problem with those drills are that they don't give you a bit that's really capable of going through rebar. So you have to get either really lucky or you have to remember where your rebar is or you have to measure really good. All of which we didn't really do here because we had no idea where this septic was going out. So it got to the point at my local Home Depot that they stopped renting these big core drills out because everybody would just break the teeth off with the rebar. So they don't even have anything more than like a three inch bit. So I'm sure I could find one somewhere else to rent, but I had a bunch of holes that I had to drill at my house and some of them are in the air and they need to be up to six inches. And there's no way I could do that with a rental from Home Depot. I may be able to rent one of these from somebody else, but I'm sure it's going to be a few hundred dollars and probably a long trip to get there. So I called a local core drilling company and asked them how much it would be for them to come in and just do a few holes on my house. And they said it was a $1,200 minimum and that's even just with one hole, it would cost $1,200. And then it could be more than that if there's a bunch of holes, but it was $1,200 for them to show up. So I got looking around online and I found this company, it's Blue Rock. And for $1,200, I bought the core drill rig and I bought a six inch core bit to go with it. And it's capable of going through rebar. It's got a diamond bit, but it's a different kind than the normal ones that you would use that snap off when you hit rebar. So yes, I could have shopped around and tried to find another rental place that would rent this out. But this is a pretty big unit and I'm not sure how many places would really rent this out. But I figured I could probably make use of this in the future, not just this hole and then another, I think, three holes on my house. So that's why I decided to go ahead and invest in it. And the instructions for this are almost non-existent. They give you like a parts breakdown and they tell you what not to do and what to do, I guess, and the safety things. But they don't really have anything about assembling it or drilling in general they have just a few little notes that they put in there but it seems like it's very solid so i don't want that to deter anybody else from getting one of these because the price is definitely right and this company's got anything you need as far as core drills go they got much bigger ones than this and they got much smaller ones i think they got mag drills and you can also buy like a kit that comes with the bits for cheaper um, but I only needed this bit really so that's why I just got the six inch bit with this one So we got a four inch septic line that's going out through that wall right there and That four inch schedule 40 pipe is somewhere is a little over four inches I think it's four and a half inches is what it's going to be so a six inch bit will be fine one thing that we need to do here this bolts onto the wall with a half inch anchor so I have a wedge anchor and I have a Tapcon anchor. I'm going to try the Tapcon first because then I can unscrew it and remove it. The wedge anchor, once you put it in there, you got to basically cut it off flush. But I need to cut out this spot. This is the center line of where I need to be here. And so I think I need to cut actually all the way up to here because the base of it gets bolted up here and then the drill sits down here. So I need to remove probably not quite this much foam the width isn't that much but if I'm removing foam I might as well just remove a, a good amount so I don't have to worry about more that I have to remove
I'm gonna just put this Tapcon in here first, just to see how it goes. Seems pretty solid. I'm pretty sure they want you to mount that bracket on the top and have it hang down, which would make sense. In my mind, that would give it more support laterally. But I don't have any choice here because my dad has some wires running through the wall right there. We didn't know where this was going to go out, so there was no trying to avoid it really. But underneath those metal strips is some Romex wire and so I can't cut the foam out because I'd need to be up into there to cut a chunk out to put that bracket in. So, and no matter where we went left or right, it would be the same thing. So that just wasn't gonna happen. I could reroute the wires if I wanted to, but it's just a lot of work. I think this would be fine. I'm not gonna put any limbs underneath of it in case it breaks or something. But I guess this is a good test for this, doing something it's not really designed for. And I don't even know that for a fact. It could be designed to do this, I don't know. But we'll find out. So they give you a little water hose with it so that you can not only cool the cut down, but also you can eliminate most of the dust too, which is really nice. And they got a little shut off valve on there and it just hooks up to a garden hose. So I gotta get a garden hose run over here and let's put that core drill on in the meantime though. Let's see how that works. I know that thing's pretty big. See, that's the teeth that you want on the end. You don't want those other teeth that are like much narrower. I guess you could say this is almost like um, something that you would use for like tile or something. But that's what's gonna cut through rebar. Those other ones, they just break off. All right, so I think we're ready to fire in the hole.
That was sweet. That was pretty much effortless and dustless and very quick. I'm very impressed. Let's take it out and see if we hit any rebar. I don't think so, but maybe. Look at that. Nice. It's not even warm. Well, I don't think I hit any rebar, but I got some more holes to drill at my house. And I'm sure I'll hit rebar in one of those. So I'm very curious to see what happens when you hit rebar, but Going through this eight inches of concrete was effortless. The hardest part was just setting the drill, which I also discovered that you can just split the drill from the bar, which makes it a lot easier. There was just a set screw on it that you had to take out and that's it. So now we can set this septic line for my parents, which is a video that you guys already saw. So we are back at my house and I need to core drill a couple holes, but before we do that, let's take the concrete out of here and just check out, see what it looks like. So on my house, on that gable end over there, I need to drill two holes. One is gonna be the makeup air for the dryer, which is gonna pull air in, because the house is so tight. The other one is gonna be the exhaust for the HRV. Both of them are gonna be located right below the peak of this gable end here. So with this one, it's not feasible to do it from inside because there's a chase area up there that it's gonna go through and there's not enough room to work. So we're gonna do it from the outside. We're gonna use a boom lift and it should be pretty easy.
So the nice thing about ICFs is they have numbers on them, so you can correlate with the back side of it with the numbers, and you can get an exact spot where you need to be. So I need to take out this rectangle area here, and I ran the lines past it so that when I cut that out, I can redraw that line. That's the center of where the hole is supposed to be. And then that's the center where the half inch anchor is supposed to go. So again, I drew the lines out and up so I know where the centers are.
at this rebar that I hit right here. Two pieces of rebar on that side and two on this side. It was a So on this side of the house, I needed to put this hole here for my dryer. So in this hole, I got a set of horizontal rebar and a set of vertical rebar. Verticals right there and right there, and then horizontal and right there. All right, so I got those two holes drilled there, and I got the one on the other side. And I was gonna install all the pieces into there to make it look like it's gonna look forever, the final look on it, but for some reason they're like two weeks out from being shipped, so I'm gonna skip on that for now. But you guys get the point. The core drill did really good. Let's look at these samples here. So this is the one from my parents' house, which I actually need to go do another one over there because they want another hole for a dryer. But let's see, I think all the ones on my house, I hit the rebar. Oh, maybe not, maybe, maybe not this one. But I know, see there's two pieces of rebar right there. And then of course on the other side, you hit it again. And then on this one, there's a piece of rebar. There's a piece of rebar, which means on the other side, again, the same thing. Two pieces of rebar, one right there. It did really well going through that rebar. I couldn't even tell. It slowed down maybe a little bit, but it wasn't even enough to barely notice. And then of course my parents, I didn't hit the rebar which is kind of pure luck because the rebar is every 16 inches so if you got a six inch piece there's a good chance that you're gonna hit a piece of rebar and they're 16 inches going both ways horizontally and vertically so the chance of you hitting a piece of rebar is greater than not hitting one but again it didn't really seem to slow down the drill it's meant for that and if you guys remember my second floor pour I had a problem where the pump truck showed up late an hour late actually and the slump was really, really low on that by the time he got here. Because I had accelerator in it and the mix sat there for a lot longer than it should have before it was poured. And then of course when we started pouring, it started raining. But anyways, I'm glad to see that there's not really any voids in the concrete because that was worrying me a little bit because it was really dry. But it seemed to turn out pretty good. 
but I'm glad to see that there really isn't any honeycombing going on. That's definitely a relief on my mind. But anyways, I'm not paid to do this video about this Blue Rock core drill or anything. Um, I bought it like anybody else would. I didn't get any kind of discount or anything. But as far as I can see, I would recommend it. It seems like a pretty good tool. I think you could actually make money off of it if you went in the core drilling business. You could probably use that almost every day. You just gotta take care of it, grease it up a little bit. Uh, maybe not push too hard. I didn't really push that hard because it's supposed to have like a full 20 amp circuit, but they didn't give you a full 20 amp plug with it. So, so I didn't really use a full 20 amp circuit. Um, I think 15 amps is probably fine as long as you don't push it too much. A 20 amp plug looks a little different than a regular standard 15 amp plug. So I don't have any 20 amp plugs. N normally people don't have that unless like you're using some sort of woodworking tool that's maybe less than 240 volt, but maxing out on a 120 volt so i thought maybe i'd have to use my generator and plug it into that but it worked just fine with a regular outlet i did use a smaller cord at one point it was like a thinner cord and it heated it up so much that it actually almost melted it so i wouldn't recommend that use a heavy duty cord like 12 gauge or even 10 gauge but other than that i had no problems with anything else and i'll probably use it again a bunch of times in the future um, I already have a few more uses for it I just have to get a different bit because I have to core drill for my geothermal coming in that side of the building so I'll probably end up getting like a two or two and a half inch bit for that that's a pretty big pipe coming into there and like I said I got to do the dryer duct for my parents house too and they might also need a fresh air system so I might have to do a couple more for that we're not sure yet but anyways, that's it for this video, guys, and I will catch you on the next one.